If you remember, we were mentioning five different questions back and forth from Rav Nachman to Rav Yitzchak. Rav Yitzchak kept on answering in the name of Rav Yochanan. And it says as follows. Amale comes and he says, this is what Rav Yochanan says. If you remember, we asked, why is it that Shemuel and Rabbi was old? He wasn't old. So he said, no, he was only 52. So he said, you're right. He said, dikna kaptala. It was dikna. Right? Elderness that fell upon him. Why did it fell upon him? But it says in the Pasuk, Nihamti, King Lachti at Shaul. I am consoled that I made Shaul king. Amale Panav, he says in front of him, Rosh Hashanah, Shekaltani, Kemoshe Varon, Mimi, Kutu Moshe Varon, Dikti, Moshe Varon, Mikolam Shemu, Mikolam Shemu, Moshe Varon, with his Kohanim and Shemu, Mikolam Shemu, which means that they're equal. Ma Moshe Varon, just like Moshe Varon, Lobat, Luma, Say, the Mechem, right? There, Ma Say, the Hem, there actions were not annulled in their daytimes, in their lifetimes. It should not be annulled in my lifetime. What am I going to do? He says, if I'm going to kill Shaul, Shaul is not going to let me. So what's it going to help me? Yeah? Right? He says, if Shaul is going to say, I'm going to kill Shaul now, they're going to start saying that he's too young. I'm going to start saying, what's going on? He's too young. If I'm not going to kill either or, it's already going to come, they're going to bring on, that all of a sudden he's going to look much older. So all of a sudden, within a year, two years, boom, he's got all the white hair, all of this. He looks like mama. So all of a sudden, he aged. Yeah, everything. That's what it's written. Shaul Shaul. And Rama is the city of Shemuel, Aramati. Right? Shemuel. To tell you, to teach you. Who is the cause that Shaul lived for another two and a half years? It was a tefillah of Shemuel Aramati, which means that only because of this tefillah, it caused them to live for another two years. So the Gemara is now going to ask, and this is where we're coming new, this is what the Gemara is now going to ask on this. Can you push off somebody's lifetime because of another lifetime? Which means, here, what are you doing in essence? You're making that Shemuel Anavi, right, is going to die before his time, right? in order that Shaul should die, in order that David should become king. So you're pushing off Shemuel because of, right, Shaul. That's what you're doing. You understand? Everyone understood one more time. It's like a chain reaction. Yeah, one more time. Shaul has to die. Why does Shaul have to die? Because David has to become king. But Shaul cannot die, but Shemuel doesn't want him to die. So therefore, Hashem has to make that Shemuel has to die, in order that Shaul could die, in order that he could become king. Can you push off a life for a life? What's going on over here? Right? That, well, that's, that's the question that we're asking. Can you do such a thing? Yes. 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 So he's I killed them with the words of my mouth. It does not say in the Pasuk that the Nevi'im were killed because of a sin. Which means Mitat Shemuel was because in order to be Mikayim the Gzera Vashem to do Malchut David. Alma, so you see from him. That sometimes a person's lifetime is pushed away because of another person, right? Because here, this was the Gizra, which was because of the decree, which means that sometimes when you have like a stira, a contradiction of two different people, Hashem has to actually maneuver it to put all the pieces into play. Ah, by doing that, you're going to be pushing away somebody earlier. That's, that's what you have to do. Okay? So that's what the Gemara says until now. Next. <laughs> Another <laughs>
Now we're going to continue, but now it's not anymore questions and answers. Remember that until now, they were all questions of Rabbi Nachman to Rabbi Yitzchak, and then Rabbi Yitzchak kept on answering in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. Now it's just other agatot in the name of right, Rabbi Yitzchak and Rabbi Nachman. Remember, that's a continuation, because if not, you think about it, what's the connection between each Gemara? So obviously there was a connection. So it says here like this, Rabbi Nachman and Rabbi Yitzchak, Abu Yatru the Suda. Rabbi Nachman and Rabbi Yitzchak were sitting down in the Suda. Right, Yatve is Yoshev. Right, Yatve. Right, it's like Yoshev. The Tav and the Shin here in the Shingles, it's like Yoshev. Yoshev the Suda. Amale Rabbi Nachman and Rabbi Yitzchak says, Rabbi Nachman to Rabbi Yitzchak. Yeah? Leima Mor Milta. No? Say the Torah. Yeah, imagine. You're a bar mitzvah, they come and say, Bechavo, say the word Torah. Amale, he says, Akhim Rabbi Yochanan, this is what Rabbi Yochanan said. Em Masechim Suda. You don't talk in the rules. Why? Shem Yabdim, Kanel Veshet. Ah, very good. Yeah, because maybe it's going to be Magdim, the Kanel Veshet, which means maybe the food is going to go down the Kanel, which is the windpipe, instead of the food pipe. Right? right? The esophagus instead of the. the um, which coming is going to start speaking. It might be that all of a sudden now, instead of swallowing, it's going to swallow the wrong part. And he's via the sakana, it's going to come to a sakana. So, but that is Saud. So, after they finish eating, Amale, he comes and he tells him, This is what Rabbi Yochan says. Right? That means basically now that they finish eating, now he can say the Torah. So, he says the Torah. This is what Rabbi Yochan says. Yaakov Avinu Lomet. Yaakov Avinu never died. Yeah? So, Amale says the Nachman to Rabbi Tzhar. Yeah, says Rabbi Nachman to Rabbi Tzchak, "V'chi v'chi stafdu sefadanya, v'chantu chantaya, v'kavru kablay." He says, "What? For no reason? For no reason? The ones that were eulogized, stafdu is we spoke, right? It's uh, sped. Stafdu stafdanya, the, the the ones that do eulogies, they for no reason they did eulogies. The chantu chantaya, the ones that did the involvement." Those are the ones that they come and they like put the body in like a mummy, you know, like in a form to make sure that the body stays intact, right? They did it for no reason, right? Or the kavru kabraya, or the ones that buried him, right? Was said there was nothing. What's going on? How how do you understand that you're coming and they're saying they eulogized, they embalmed him, they buried him, but he didn't die? <laughs> Explain English. What's going on here? So he answers Amale. He comes and says, right? I'm not saying it from a svara. I'm not saying it from a logic. I'm expounding in a pasuk. What's a pasuk? Shneimar it says a pasuk in Yemiya. Yeah, ve'ata al tira vi Yaakov. Yeah, and you don't worry about it, my servant Yaakov. Why? Min Hashem says Hashem. Ve'al tichati says, do not be afraid. He's today. Ki neni moshiacha menachok was I'm going to save you from a distance. Ve'et zanacha. Yeah, and by your children from the land of their captivity. Now, did you realize that it's written, Yaakov Avinu, it's written Israel, it's written also Zanacha, Menachidia. So now the question is, one sec, Hashem is saving the children from exile, yes, but he's saving Yaakov Avinu from exile. What is he saving Yaakov Avinu from exile? He's saving Yaakov Avinu from exile. passed away. So he says, no. Makishu Lezaro. There's a juxtaposition. Right, there's a proximity. Why is it written together, Yaakov Avinu and his children? What's the connection between Zanacha and Shibya and Yaakov and Yisrael? So he says, just like Hakadosh Baruch Hu is going to take them from the land of their captivities when they are alive, right? Because obviously something that's dead is not captivity. He's already he's already dead. Afu so to Yaakov Avinu and therefore, from here we learn that he didn't die and he's going to be redeemed from the Galut together with his children. This is actually what's brought down over here. Obviously, there's a huge footnote over here. What does that mean exactly? Okay. It, it, there, again, I don't want to, you know, believe that when we go a little bit more into a yun, the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth time, then we could speak about it. But this is just Pashup Shah. Okay, just translating the words of the Gimara. Just to understand what's going on. Okay? Another, another one second. Right? Another Agadah of Rabbi Yitzchak Rabbi. Amar Rabbi Yitzchak says Rabbi Yitzchak, Kola Omer Rachav Rachav, Niyad Mikre. Anybody that says the word Rachav, Rachav twice, 
which means this is the Rahab Zona, right? This is the wife of Yoshua bin. Remember that Yoshua sent the Meraglim and which was Pinchas and Caleb, and she saved them. And then afterwards she actually did get married to Yoshua bin. So this Rahab, if anybody mentions this name of Rahab, so immediately they will have a seminal discharge because of the Taba, the last, right? And because obviously she was so beautiful, right, that it would uh, arouse, right, desires. And therefore, immediately a person would have a seminal discharge. He says, what? I could say it a hundred times. What does that mean? Okay, Rahab. You know, even the uh, was, you know, you, what does that mean? So he says, No, Amarle, we say, Ki kamina, when did we say this? Biodav Makira. What does that mean, Biodav Makira? Which means if you already know her, if you know who she is, right? So then all of a sudden you're going to come, right? And you're going to have this desire, right? And therefore, the second that you mention the name, that's already enough because you know, right, exactly who she is. Okay, another, right, Gemara, also again. This is now when they were departing from each other. So, when they were departing from each other. Amar he went to Nachman and told the Mitzvah, no, give me, give me a bracha. You're leaving, give me a bracha. Amar he told them, so the Yitzchak tells him, Nachman, I'm going to give you a mashal. What is this compared to? A person that's going to the desert. So the guy is hungry, he's tired, and he's thirsty. So imagine he finds a tree that the fruits were incredible. They were sweet, and it had an incredible shame. Shame, right? There's a matamayim. All of a sudden, there's a stream of water which is going underneath the tree. So he eats from the fruits. Shatami Mimavi drinks from the waters. Yashab bet Silo, now he's exhausted. So he's sitting in the shade, right, of this beautiful tree, right? So he's enjoying himself. All of a sudden, right, each one was connected, obviously, another one, right? In Shibikesh Lelech, when he wants to leave, he says, Amar, Ilan, Ilan, Baba, Varechicha. Yeah, what is this? This is actually a song, right? Ilan, Ilan, tree, tree. What am I going to bless? Imo Valecha Shu Protecha Metukim. If I'm going to bless you that your fruit should be sweet, your fruit's already sweet. So I can't give you a blessing on that. Right? Why? You don't need it. That your shade should be so beautiful, should so good. You have a good shade. Right? You should have water always by you. You have a So the what? So what is the bracha that I'm going to give you? He comes and he says, the bracha that I'm going to give you is, all the plantings that they plant from you, should be like you. That means everything they plant from you should be like you. What am I going to bless you? You have Torah. It's going to be with wealth. You've got wealth. Children, you have children. Now I want you guys to afterwards play it back into the what's considered the water compared to the fruits, what are compared to the water, and what's going to be compared to the to the shape. Okay, which one? Right? Okay, maybe homework, homework, homework. The idats on your children should be exactly like you. It should be like you in Torah. Also in Oshet and also in Kavro. Okay? So therefore, this is where we're going to finish. You guys are going to do in the two dots. You have your two dots, by the way. Give me three.